This is going to be two videos. One video is going to be machining the casting and then the second video I'm going to show uh, actually scraping this in. Keith uh, beat me to posting his. Um, he's got a video up on how he did his. Now he did his on a horizontal mill and and a vertical I believe and I'm going to do just mine on my vertical mill. I did one of them, uh, kind of cheated to make sure that it would work, and I'm going to show, uh, I'll do a second one and show you how I did the first one. So the order of operation I'm going to do, is I'm going to machine this top part first, it gives me a flat spot, so when I turn it over, um, I turn this over a couple times when I machine it, so I want a good reference here. Um, this is... Uh, you know got a big seam down it. it's not very stable so by machining it this way first and then flipping it over I'll have something consistent that way and then after I do the top then we'll do this bottom now this bottom looks uh, you can see a lot of machining marks this cutter um, that I'm going to use it's an insert cutter on regular steel leaves an almost mirror finish on this cast it's uh, not nothing like that although this is plus or minus less than a thousand these grooves you can barely feel and it's just the porosity of this casting this isn't door bar um, so it, it's not quite as machine it doesn't machine quite as smooth as uh, some other cast um, cast irons but it's it's more than serviceable enough like I say I don't have a surface grinder so I'm gonna have to uh, scrape this go straight from machining to scraping so I want to get it as square as I can then uh, I'm gonna do this edge here and then even though the ends don't do anything I'm gonna go ahead and square up the edges and the final one will be this 45 which takes the most time because it's a really sketchy uh, way to hold it. Um, Keith has these for sale I think they're around a hundred hundred and twenty dollars plus shipping um, for the rough casting so let's get to it. Okay I want to take this casting Put it in the vise this way so I can machine this top. It's real wobbly and it's wobbly because uh, where the spews were, they stick down a little bit. So, what I'm going to try, I got some welding rod. This is actually a stainless TIG rod. I'll put two pieces down there and stick this down little bit better and then we're gonna that looks pretty centered lock that in there okay that should do all right we're just gonna make a couple passes here until we get it flat I want to be about in the center of my cutter I'm running the cutter about 550 rpm it's a six index so the cutters a CNMG it's the inserts are for steel uh, it's the only th closest thing I have for doing cast iron and I'm running it at uh, 550 rpm the feed rate is going to be seven inches a minute Take the rough edges off.
I'm just using air to blow any chips off. I'm not using any coolant. I'm going to take it out and uh, deburr it. Now, one thing you um, can't see in camera, but this is pretty warm. So, after I get done doing the rest of it, I'm going to come back one more time and do the bottom because that's causing quite a bit of warpage, I think, which is why we're getting some of this pattern. You can see that's where it springs when it first comes up on there's a there's a couple thou spring there I don't have enough room to put a um, machinist clamp under it so we'll take another pass when it cools down okay this edge I have no idea where that's at and I've been machining things to this face so what I've done is installed, got a couple of parallel parallels in here. I'm going to set this on there and then tighten it. Now, this edge does not have to be parallel to anything really because you don't, you don't use it like that. But I'm going to try and get it somewhat square. Okay, we've got to do a tool change here. And we put in a little end mill. Okay, I'm not real proud of this setup, but it worked on the other one, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, it's definitely sketch. I've got two V-blocks here. I can get two uh, clamps on this side. I can only fit one on this side. When I'm cutting, the cutter's going to be turning this way, and it's going to be pushing the parallel down into the V block in this direction and then we're just going to get a little scratching on the back side so that I'm not uh, the cut is not going to try and pull it out of the V block and I'm only going seven thousandths per pass um, just so that uh, I'm, I'm taking the lightest cut and still get it done and hopefully it doesn't pop out of there we'll give it a try Okay, the machine's all done. This is the one we just did. I had to take it a little more than this one in order to get it to get all the uh, edges even and smooth. It's got a really nice finish. Um, there's probably only there's less a lot less than a thousand half a thou between 
the marks on here, which is actually a little better than this one. This one I can feel a couple little spots. There's probably maybe a thousandth. Now, you know, I machined it. That machine is pretty good. I can get within a couple tenths. But when you're machining something that's hanging out of the vise, even if it's only hanging out an inch and a half on each side, you, you still get bending when you're machining it. So I wouldn't be surprised if the ends are, are you know, a thousandths um, bow in it this way. Um, we'll see when we, when we go to lay that out. Now, when we start scraping, um, Richard King always says, if you got to take more than five thousandths, then it's better to machine it. So I'm sure these are way better than five thousandths. When you start scraping, um, your cuts are deep, uh, probably half a thou if you're doing it right, when you're going across on your initial passes. Um, on a, well, I'll get all into that when we get into the scraping part of it. But for now, they're all machined and ready for scraping.